Hello, Facebook fans and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. It's Tuesday afternoon. We're talking to Kirk, K4RO, today from the DX Engineering Sales and Support Staff. Hello, Kirk. Hey, Tim. How you doing? Doing great, uh, Kirk. I wanted to get into more tips, especially what you're hearing from customers and maybe some of your club members on things that they're doing now that the, the calendar is September and, uh, you know, the leaves are starting to change. Things are starting to get going. And the solar flux is over 200. So, man, this is going to be a great ride as we go on through fall and winter. What do you think? Uh, I couldn't agree more. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this, the flux topped 300 uh, on 31st or somewhere around there, which I'm not sure I've even seen happen before, but certainly not very frequently. So very interesting times indeed. The sun is uh, going to prevent all kind of uh, present all kind of surprises this year. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, I'd, I'd say the one thing I get the most calls about, and I probably spend the most time talking about would be the importance of good quality coax cable and the importance of good quality coax connectors. And <clears throat> there's just, there, there's, so much that needs to be done right and so much rides on having good connectors and good coax it's literally the most important link in the system perhaps i mean the rate, having great radios and great antennas are terrific but if you don't have you know a good feed line between them it, neither one of them is going to live up to their potential so we talk you know, a lot about coax types you know one of the things uh, when you're uh, talking about coax that um you know, I've experienced, and I know Roger Cox, uh, who used to work at High Game, he would, uh, he was very, very plain. He said, hams really struggle with getting the shields soldered. And in today's environment, Kirk, if you don't have your shield soldered or crimped, good crimp connector is, is, is great. Or if you have a, a solder, connector you've got to solder the shields because what happens when you don't have a good connection on the shield uh, a lot of bad things happen for one thing you have a, a, a way for signal leakage to get in and out of the coax affecting transmit and receive uh, if connections are si kind of there but not really it can form a semiconductor which can really cause a lot of problems. Uh, it'll rectify transmitted signals and then rebroadcast them on the outside of your shields and cause a great deal of trouble. Um, so shield integrity is critically important. I recall you used to use, or perhaps still do, the N4AR method of soldering the shield over the back. Nowadays, we have these terrific connectors designed and patented by DXC that pretty much solve the shielding problem and allow a 360 degree connection all the way around the shield provides a very, very strong physical connection as well as an electrical connection. And then the other thing I spend a lot of time talking about is the importance of waterproofing those connections and describing the fact that just because something keeps water out doesn't mean it keeps water vapor out and water vapor can get in there. And then when the temperature drops, Guess what happens to that vapor condenses and becomes liquid water inside your coax. So we work, work hard with customers to try to help them understand the importance of what of proper connections and proper weather sealing, because, you know, it may work great the, the day you put it up for the next week or next several months. But then once water starts to get in there, there will be a degradation on both transmit and receive. And the only time you'll really notice it is when you replace your bad coax. So, very important. You know, um, that it, it brings up an important point when you talk about the shield integrity. You know, guys will, will, will take and turn the radio on and they hear S9 or 10 over 9 noise. Um, and even if they disconnect their antenna from the amplifier or maybe uh, from a watt meter, they still hear the noise. And that's because the shield is not acting correctly as a shield. It's not properly connected. And uh, it, and it's just letting all that noise, which can be from wall warts that are in the shack. How about LED uh, lights and, and those sorts of things? So really, uh, really important. Um, talk for a second about your 
uh, grounding panel that you have down in the basement of, of your shack? So I, I used to have, I guess what you, you might consider an average hams quote unquote ground system, a ground rod pounded in the ground somewhere random near the antennas and, you know, maybe a ground wire run into it. And I live on a ridge top and I am in Tennessee and we get frequent lightning. And I used to lose a lot of equipment um, pretty much every, even if I disconnected most of the stuff, anything that was uh, involved with a serial cable or network cable got zapped very frequently. I finally took the advice of a lot of smart folks such as Ward Silver and others who really understand this stuff and created an actual ground system <clears throat> where I put a string of ground rods from my home electrical ground where the power comes in to my station, which unfortunately is on the other side of the house. But those rods are, all, are you know, spaced about 10, 15 feet apart. They're all bonded together with number four copper. Then in the basement, that is bonded to a four by four foot panel. And that panel contains all of my uh, antenna switching, receive antenna switching, filtering, and other devices. And, uh, you know, uh, Correlation is not necessarily causation, but I have not less left lost a single piece of equipment since I installed that ground system. And so I'm <laughs> I'm a big believer in good grounds. And I also have experienced less interference and less. Uh, I have two radios here where I transmit on one while receiving on the other. And the interference between the radios dropped uh, drastically after I also bonded all those systems together. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a living proof that ground systems can really make a difference. And yeah, we're in that, trouble. That, that bonding, and uh, Ward talks about that in his book, Grounding and Bonding for the Radio Amateur, which is just a super, super uh, book. And uh, anybody who has got a home station, it's not expensive uh, and it's not hard to bond all the equipment together. And as you say, you know, get get all those ground rods on the same potential, get them all hooked together and uh, things are going to work out good. Um, you know, I wanted to go into the chat room here for a second, uh, Kirk, because we, we do have a lot of viewers on with us. X-Ray Echo 2 Zulu Zulu is on today. Our friend Michael W3 Mike Lima Japan is on from Zelianopal, Pennsylvania. So just north of Pittsburgh and uh, Kirk, you're from Pittsburgh. So, uh, Michael uh, is a young guy who's doing great things, going on a uh, contest expedition here for the uh, CQ Worldwide in October. And uh, Ooh, Jacob is on, Alpha India 5 X-Ray Radio. And Brady, another young guy who's doing great things, W3 Bravo Radio Lima. And Donnie, uh, Kilo Kilo 4 Echo Kilo Kilo. This is one of the best videos yet. I need to talk to Kirk. And Donnie is in Tennessee, so you can get Kirk on the DX Engineering line. Bob the Traveler, WD8 November, Victor November. He had a great weekend uh, of POTA activations because the weather was so good. And uh, then we've got uh, Red Dog 297, North Alabama. Okay. And Mark is on Alpha Bravo 8 Sierra X-Ray from nearby Akron, Ohio. So uh, lots of good things. In fact, uh, the POTA uh, folks are really racking up some big numbers, Kirk. How, how is POTA in Tennessee? Uh, POTA is a pretty big thing. We have quite a few parks here in Tennessee. In fact, I have three or four within probably 10-minute drive of where I am right now. <clears throat> um, next weekend, I'm going to be mobile with AD4EB in the Tennessee QSO party, and we're going to start at one of the parks and probably uh, go through a few on our mobile venture. Um, I think POTA is a terrific program. Hope to hear lots of you calling Tennessee this weekend, and I, I think it's just a f fantastic combination of adventure and radio and exercise and fresh air, which aren't always associated with radio, so it's a it's a good thing to have. You know, it it, it is a, a really good thing. And the Tennessee QSO party, uh, I mean, uh, to be with Jim, 84EB, Mobile, he is a mobile professional. Really, really good guy. 
he's the master. I, uh, I'm always astounded at how well his station works and what a great operator he is and how he's turned this mobile thing into, he's really taken it to a whole new level. You know, it's, it's a great idea, Kirk. Uh, you know, I, I think we'll try to have Jim on maybe not this week. I'm, I imagine he's a little busy, but uh, <laughs> his presentation at contest university this year about his mobile setup was just fabulous. And there were a lot of tips about installing uh, HF radios in the mobile that he had that I think would be really great to uh, share with the, our viewers, our customers, um, because the mobile is a, a special a special system, Kirk, right? That's right. It, I also think even non-mobile operators would benefit greatly from watching his presentation because a lot of the same techniques and and tricks really apply to any RF system. So well worth a look. Jim did a terrific job there. Well, I, I think that uh, we'll have him on and uh, we'll also have, we're going to get some of the activators on from uh, POTA to uh, talk about their experiences. And uh, we have uh, Rob on from West Virginia. That's Kilo Delta 8 Yankee Whiskey Fox. And uh, we also have uh, Michael Coulter one of the uh, driving forces behind Hambenchen, W8 Charlie India. Mark is on from England. Mike Zero, Delta X-Ray Radio. This guy is great to operate with. Thanks, Kirk, and great to see you. And right back at you, Mark. We <laughs> also have Marvin on, Kilo India 4, Quebec X-Ray, X-Ray, and uh, glad to have us back on live. You know, during the summer months, Kirk, we all get busy with uh, other things, but uh, you know, it's September and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get on, especially 10 meters and six meters, 12 meters, and take advantage of these fabulous conditions. Um, I gotta imagine in Tennessee, uh, 10 meters has just been great. Yeah, it's, it, it's not quite Florida, but it's, uh, it's, you know, as you know, the further south you go, the 10 meter propagation can be hum become enhanced and we have had some nice openings and you just never know when you're going to get them. 10 meters is uh, pretty fickle. You may tune. I had a customer call last week, said his radio no longer worked on 10 meters. Well, the band was dead that day and we confirmed everything was working fine. I told him I'm not hearing anything either with 10 and 100 feet. So I'm pretty sure your system you know, working all right. So you got to be there when it opens to enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, it's certainly uh, as we get into the fall conditions and winter conditions, uh, it's just going to be super. Well, Kirk, thanks so much for coming on today. And thanks for all you do to help our customers. Um, whether it's via email, via text, on the phone. And, uh, you know, your 50-plus years of experience, that comes in pretty handy. <laughs> it, it does help to uh, having, having had already made most of the mistakes, it helps to steer others from having to make the same mistakes. So very grateful. Well, and we're, we're super glad to have you on the team. And thanks to all of you for watching today. Uh, you know, always from the chat room, I get ideas about uh, things that we can do in the future. And we're going to have a couple of POTA shows here coming up. So stay tuned for that. Get on the radio and have some fun this week. And don't forget to get on the Tennessee QSO party and work as many people as you can hear on the air and have fun with that, too. Until next time, 73 from DX Engineering. 73.